speedtest.net is an amazing tool, but test the wrong way and you look like a fool. A couple of weeks ago, I uh, tested my home internet and I was using my laptop and I was using my phone to see what the results were that I could get. Now that, that obviously learned us, uh, taught us quite a few things that we needed to know. Uh, in this video, I just want to go further into that and just really figure out what's the best way to test so that you can get the fastest results from speedtest.net. But before we do that, um, do remember to stay connected to RF Shop by subscribing to our channel and clicking that bell. Um, that way you can keep connected, you can be part of the conversation and if you have any suggestions or any ideas, please feel free to comment and let us know through the channel as well. All right, let's get into it. Um, the first thing I did is in my test setup at home, I had a look at what I can do. So of course there's the um, Ethernet cable, there's um, Wi-Fi connections and Wi-Fi connection, which is really important, can be um, uh, a 2.4 or 5.8 gig network. Um, there's also, if you want to do the optimal test for your, for your speed to see how your internet is going, you also need to look at the um, time of day. Um, I also had a bit of a look at the browser that you use. So I am, I'm just a Firefox user, have always been. Um, it's, that, I mean, it's always up for debate if you like it or not, but um, the point was I was just looking to see if Firefox, um, Chrome, Edge, Safari, which I use on my iPhone obviously, um, and another one, Brave, if, if I see any significant differences between those. Um, and then of course the um, kind of the elephant in the room is ad blockers because um, I, I do feel that if you have advertisements running on your test or during your test that's, that's obviously going to cause issues on your throughput. Um, so first of all to avoid confusion I just want to put a few technologies out there to explain what's going on. Um, first of all you have Wi-Fi standards, you have quite a few Wi-Fi standards. Um, the one is that you have um, more the old school ones is 802.11a or b. Um, G is also um, actually relatively old by now. If you look at the date, it's 2003, so it's 18 years old. Um, then more recent, you have the um, 11n and 11ac is now quite um, awesome. And then 11ax is, um, is up and coming as well, also called Wi-Fi 6. Um, now, where I got caught in my first test, I did my test on 2.4 gig and, and I was kind of I was assuming 11N, so if you look at the speeds, I could get 600 megabits. So I thought, well, that's way more than my 5 five gig. See, now I get caught here. My 5G network, so I thought that would be fine. And it, well, spoiler alert, it wasn't. Um, then the other thing is 802.11ac, which I just basically forced to 5 gig um, networks. So you can see both of those technologies, or actually all those technologies, use 2.4 and 5 gig. Um, what I did in my test is I basically set it to 2.4 or 5.8. Um, those are the two specific tests that I did in my test going forward in, in this video. The other thing that's quite um, important to keep in mind, and this is where it is confusion if you are not specifically in this field, that the word 5, 5 gigahertz, which I talk about when I say um, Wi-Fi, or 5G, which is in the cellular network, is two totally different things. So I just made it there. So mobile or cellular networks, 3G is the third generation, 4G is the fourth generation, which is currently still the, the main one here in Australia and probably worldwide. And then 5G, the fifth generation, that's the one that's up and coming. Everybody's talking about it. It's the exciting new one that's coming up. So that's the five in the 5G. Um, and the 5G, when you look at your Wi-Fi network, is the 5 gigahertz network, which is a totally different thing. That's a different frequency band that it operates on compared to 2.4G. So I hope this table that I have on your screen helps, helps to um, just lay the foundation. So I did a lot of tests. This table I have on the screen now is a summary of all the tests I've done. So uh, if you look at the readings there, it's the... Um, the ping or the latency, the download and the upload speed. Those are the, um, all the things that I just looked at and report here. Um, and I'll just, I'll keep bringing this, this uh, table back on the screen um, as I just went through all my tests to see what can I do to actually learn what's going on. Now, under the first test was just really what's going on, what can I do? Um, so initial experiment and I really had a struggle with very good luck there, you could see. Um, first of all, I set my modem to 2.4 gig, which is the one that I used up to up to then. Obviously, now I, um, I'd never use 2.4 anymore um, for obvious reasons, which you'll see. Um, 26 milliseconds, that's 88 download and 9 up. Now, typically, that's, that's, that's good enough because it works great. And, and if you look at the national uh, NBN here, the um, fiber network, that's kind of what you could expect. Um, but then when I went to my 5 gig, 
um, network, Wi-Fi network, and keep in mind this is a 5G Optus connection that I have at home. Um, I had 401 megabits down, so <laughs> of course, really happy. So the next two screens, just quickly show the screenshots that I got there, just to show what, what exactly the conditions were. You see those are the results that I got for my browser, which was Firefox, it's just the standard one I use on this laptop, um, 5.8 gig Wi-Fi. You can see there on the right, I just have a screenshot that includes my actual network connection. So the Nokia, just the basic reading there, so I didn't change the SSID on that one. SSID is the, um, the name for my network, and dash five shows is the five gig setting. Um, so that's the results that I got. And down at the bottom, you can see the time that I did it. So um, 17 minutes past six in the um, morning, I think. Let's have a look. So anyway, so the next test I did is just switched over to the other network. So Cascop Aussie is the name for the network, which was it, or is still the 2.4 gig one. And you can see that the download speed is 88. I mean, the world of difference. So that's really what got me. So we need to fix this up, um, really go further on this. So the next step I did is just to really look in the evening. So there we go. Now that's the answer to my question. Um, I tested between Firefox, Chrome and Edge. I'm not going to go into detail on the differences that I see. There are differences, interesting. Um, happy to take, take that away, but um, I'm not a Chrome user anyway, personally. I just use Firefox, I always has, to, ha, has used Firefox. So, and it worked okay. So on ethernet connections, which is obviously just cabled into my laptop, this laptop, um, you can see Firefox was 200 megabits. Chrome came in only 94 and H gave me 123 download. Uploads is also it's there or thereabouts, it's, it's pretty average. Um, then 2.4 gig Wi-Fi is slower. That was expected, that's what I got in my initial test from the video weeks ago. Uplo uh, download on the 5.8 gig network was constantly, consistently better for all those ones. So you could see there, that was, um, that's obviously showing what I really wanted to learn. Um, <clears throat> just a summary of all the results that you could see there. So basically what I had was, um, there's the Firefox Ethernet connection. I physically turned off my Wi-Fi just to be sure that I don't have any Wi-Fi connection. So you could see it's, um, my mobile broadband is turned off, my Wi-Fi is turned off. So that's the first test. The second one was the Chrome test. Um, and then also the, um, in the Edge. Um, now, the next test, oh, this is actually all three tests, so I'm just going through all of them, I jumped ahead, sorry about that. Um, 5.8 gig test, same thing, really fast, absolutely awesome. And then the last one was on the 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, which now is the, um, I guess, the least of our favorites. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, there we go, so those three results. Pretty awesome. Now. Um, what I wanted to do is just cross-check what I'm doing. And I went back to Firefox, again, just creature of habit, so no specific reason for it. I do have some ad blockers and I have all my other settings and all the password settings and everything is in there, so the history. So creature of habit, this laptop is five years old, got it set up five years ago and it works like a dream. Um, but the speeds are obviously significantly better in the early morning. Um, you can see in the Ethernet connection that was faster. Um, the 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, although that's the least of my favorites now, it's still faster relative to the other tests in the evening. And the early morning test on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network is, is awesome. It's, on this instance, I had 343. Now, I could keep testing to try to get to that 401 again that I had the day before, but that's not the point. And I mean, 343 megabits down is, um, I know, I'm pretty happy with that anyway. So there we go, that's the um, 5.8 gig. So stoked. The 2.4, even there I was happy, 107. I'd be happy with that compared to having an ADSL connection or a lower cost um, NBN connection. So that, even that is, is um, no, smoking. And then the last one is the um, Ethernet connection. So that's also uh, a really healthy speed. Now, um, what I did after that is just making sure that I could see a difference between my Safari and well, Safari on my iPhone and my Firefox on my laptop. Just want to test those two. And, and basically what you could see is there's, there's nothing in it. Um, you can see there's, there's my results compared to an iPhone X. So 5.8 gig on the Wi-Fi. And I set my phone to 5.8 as well and I get similar results. So at least that part is consistent, showing that that, that kind of is the speech you can expect. Not my laptop doing the work, it's not my phone doing the work, it's really the network that, that's, that's doing that. 
Um, and then the last test, which is um, something I learned from a, um, a friend of mine who's, who's quite heavy into security and, and quite sensitive about sharing details. So he told me about Brave as a browser, and it's actually quite quite awesome because <laughs> you, you are completely anonymous when you browse. You don't um, no, you don't show your identity, and, and you don't get all those trackers on. Um, I just wanted to see if that's going to make a difference. And again, that was in the early morning. Probably not much in it. So 315 versus 318. Actually, Firefox was slightly faster, but I mean, that kind of difference is, is pretty insignificant in my mind. So that was it. And I kind of just wanted to go through all these tests and share the results with you because I think it's fundamentally useful to really, if you can, go onto a 5.8 gig um, network because it, it does make a big difference. And when you test your uh, speedtest.net results or you want to contact RF shop or you want to contact anybody and say, well, my network is not working or your 4G connection is really terrible. First, be sure that you have your settings correct. So if you're expecting 200 megabits per second, uh, but you are testing on a 2.4 gig Wi-Fi network, and then you call up your network operator to say, I can only test 88 and you tell me I should get 200. That's not going to work. First, make sure that your setup is correct at home, either go through cable or you know, as I did here, just go through 5.8 gig Wi-Fi. Um, make sure. So that's basically my key message here. Um, but the other thing is, um, if I had to do tests again to compare you know, apples with apples, I'd do it in the early morning. Um, browser is a personal choice, um, but make sure that you're using the correct one. And then in what I've done here on this laptop, Chrome was, it's obviously it's an awesome browser and nothing against it. But for the speed test that I did, I probably won't use Chrome on this setup again. And in fact, I, now that I see that my phone and my laptop gets me the same result, I can test on a certain test setup on my laptop and just make sure I get the results that I can, can record. And I do a spot check on another device. In my case, I'll, I'll use my phone just to make sure. Um, and then I, I still think running running an adless test is is definitely going to be better. So don't want to have any additional traffic coming into your system, into your machine. So of course those ads, downloads, images, so there's stuff happening in the background and you don't want to have any of that happening. So yeah, that's really it. So um, I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching and um, hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. How to get awesome results with speedtest.net. Speedtest. Speedtest. <laughs> speedtest.net. Speedtest.net is an amazing tool, but test the wrong way and you look like a fool. What do you Speedtest.net. Scene one, me.